In this Sound for Video session, we're going to take a look at loudness normalization again. I had a question from Jeff. Jeff asked a number of questions, <laughs> but I wanted to kind of run through the entire mixing process uh, at a very high level, not, not super deep, but to understand when you do your loudness normalization. Now, here's the thing about loudness normalization. Normally, what we're talking about in the end is integrated loudness. That is to say, the loudness of the overall piece, the overall video, and in this case here, we're just gonna do a very simple mix here. We have some intro music, some dialogue, and then at the end we have some dial, oh, obviously the dialogue continues, and then we have a little outro music. Very simple mix, but let me just show you at a start what we're talking about here. First of all, go ahead and have your finger on the volume <laughs> so you can pull this down. We are starting with some licensed music that is very loud. Almost all popular music is incredibly loud. And then you'll see how that comes into the dialogue here. So go ahead and adjust your volume down and let's play through just a little bit here. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Canon. Okay, you can see where we're starting here. That's the reason I played that for you. First of all, you can see we're clipping on the music track. Not surprising, again, super hyper compressed popular music, not uncommon at all. And you can see that once we did move into the dialogue here, that Jeff sounds a lot less loud. And that's exactly what's happening here. So the first thing we're doing here, we're not gonna worry about loudness normalization here yet. What we're trying to do here is just our mix. And at this point, it doesn't matter where the loudness is falling out just yet. This is something we want your audience to be able to listen to without having their finger on the volume dial the entire time to compensate for things that are much louder, music, and things that are not nearly as loud, dialogue. So we wanna kinda of get these into the same ballpark. Now, there are a variety of ways you can do that. You could actually just grab the fader for this channel and pull it down and use your ears, and that's actually a really good way to do it. But if you're not trusting yourself and you're not 100% sure where things are at, what you can also do is actually just take the source tracks and match loudness. So the way to do that, we just grab both of these tracks. We're gonna pull them both down. They both happen to be stereo, so that's going to work well for us. Let's just get them at minus 23 LUFS right now. That's just a good working loudness to, to work on your mix with. We're gonna to wanna to keep the max true peak at minus one dB. Go ahead and run that. Now let's go ahead and play. Now you may have to play this a little bit louder in terms of your own volume. I'm gonna start about right here. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff. Today I'm going to be reviewing Okay, great. Now Jeff sounds a whole lot more present and definitely more in the same ballpark as the audio itself. Now you might ask yourself, well, did it also get the outro music? Well, that's the same track and indeed it did. Let's see how that works now. Still very close at a 0.5x magnification. Okay, that's sounding good there. So this is where we want to be. Now there are a couple of other things we're going to want to do here. So Let's go ahead and double click on the dialogue track here. I'm not too worried about the music track. It was already hyper compressed when it was produced by whomever produced it. And I'm not too worried about chopping off any of the transients there when we do our final loudness normalization. However, let's take a look at the dialogue here. And let's come up to amplitude statistics and just run to see where we're at. So we're at minus 23. That's what we did. We did our match loudness. And our max true peak is at minus 6.9 dB true peak. So what that means is that in the end, we're going to want to loudness normalize our overall video for web. And for web, we're generally going to want to target minus 16 LUFS. So what does that mean? Well, that means I need this overall. We're at minus 23 right now. I'm going to need to go seven LUFS louder than we are. And again, an LUFS is going to be the equivalent of a dB. So that means we need seven dB. I don't quite have that much headroom. What that means is I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of compression of some of these transients here to get us to a point where we can, you know, bring the overall loudness up. So we're gonna need that headroom. We're going to essentially loudness normalize, but the problem is, is that we don't have that full 7 dB to do that yet. So let's go ahead and undo that. That's just to illustrate what I'm talking about in terms of loudness. So uh, I'm going to want at least an additional dB of headroom once I've made enough headroom to do the loudness normalization. So again, we just need to do some simple math here. So minus 23, I need to get to minus 16. That means I need 7 dB, plus I'm gonna need an additional dB of true peak headroom. So I'm gonna need a total of 8 dB. 
So that means I'm gonna come in here and do some compression. So I'm just gonna to come to effects and let's pull up our single band compressor just to keep things very simple. If I compress to minus 10 dB here, which is where I happen to have it set right now, that should hopefully give me enough headroom here. So what I'm gonna do is take all of the peaks that are above this, I have it set right here at minus 10. All these peaks are gonna get compressed a little bit. And I'm just gonna do some mild compression. We're gonna do a ratio of three to one. I have the attack set very fast and I have the release set to about 250 milliseconds and no output gain. All I'm trying to do is not change the, the tamper of the sound. I'm just really trying to get these transients and pull them down just a tiny bit. So let's go ahead and do that. And then let's run our amplitude statistics again and see where that puts us. Now we have 8.95. So I have enough at this point to go ahead and loudness normalize that. So that's good. Let's go back to our multi-track. We're all good. So I've managed those peaks. Now, if I needed to do anything else to this audio, I would do that as well. So for example, if I double click on this again, bring it up in the waveform view, I can see there's some noise here. So I would probably wanna do any sort of noise reduction that I'm gonna do first. Um, again, I would probably do that before I even did the compression there, just uh, as a matter of order of operations, just because sometimes when you do noise reduction, sometimes you can make the waveforms a little asymmetric, so on and so forth. We're not gonna dive into that level of detail here, but again, if I were gonna do that, that would be the time I would do it. Now, once, let's say I have my mix completed, I'm gonna come up here to multi-track, and I'm gonna mix down the session to a new file. I wanna get the entire session. So now, essentially, I have made a new WAV file. You can see the music here and the dialogue here. Now, you might say to yourself, whoa, those don't look like they're in the same ballpark anymore because the waveforms aren't peaking at the same part. Well, that's the beauty of measuring loudness and using the match loudness panel is that technically this, if I measure this, amplitude statistics, is sitting at about minus 26. And the dialogue is also sitting at about minus 26. And how is that possible? The peaks are louder here. Well, that's again where LUFS is much more valuable and useful than just looking at your peaks. So you're gonna have to get out of the habit of looking at your peaks. <laughs> as far as um, assessing loudness of audio. So now once we have that, I can actually just take this file, which is now called this review mix down. I can drop that here into the match loudness. I can get rid of these others from the match loudness. All right, so now all I have in match loudness is the review mix down. I'm gonna say I want this at minus 16 LUFS. I'm gonna leave one dB true peak and go ahead and run that and let's see what we get. All right. Now we'll come into Amplitude Statistics, run this. We are now sitting at minus 16 LUFS. We have a true peak of minus 1.58, so that's safe. We generally wanna have that at minus one to minus 1 1.5 because when we export our final video, some of that, uh, that headroom will get eaten up in the process of compressing it to the AAC format or MP3 format, depending on what you're doing. So that's important to keep that. And we have it plenty loud. Let's go ahead and play it now and see where we're at. You may have to adjust your volume down again because we were look, working at much uh, lower volumes before. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff. Today I'm going to be reviewing... Okay, Jeff is sounding nice and present now. The music is kind of in the same ballpark, so we're not getting this really jarring uh, transition from the music to the dialogue. And we can see the same thing here on the outro. At a 0.5x magnification. All good. So what we would do is we take this back into Premiere or whichever video editing application we're using. There's your final mix. It's all loudness normalized, ready for upload when you export your video file. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And we'll talk to you again soon.